here's a list I've wanted to do for a long time. My favorite group of licensed games is, without a doubt, the Spongebob video games. I absolutely love every second of these games. They have sweet level design, awesome humor, and the topic of today, bosses. These are some of the best bosses I've ever faced. I'm going to be judging these on how fun they are, of course, and by their appearance and humor. With all that said, let's bring this around town. Huh? Pavel's minion isn't going to attack me for using one of his lines? Okay. But still would be awesome if you attacked me. Keep that in mind, viewers. Someone call Pavel's minion and tell him to attack me for using one of his lines. Anyone? Well, here's an odd way to start off a list. Start with a Creature from the Krusty Krab boss. Let's face it, Creature from the Krusty Krab, or CFTKK, doesn't really have any memorable boss fights. There are going to be two boss fights from CFTKK that are on this list. I had a hard time choosing two of them because, like I said, there aren't any memorable ones. After all of thinking, I finally decided which one. It's the final rooftop rumble boss of Patrick vs. Plankton. This fight is super easy, but still really fun. The main thing about this fight are these shrink rays that Mermaid Man sent you. You need to use these to shrink Plankton to his normal size, even though he probably won't like that, but he hasn't come unprepared. He constantly sends out his Plankton army to try to stop you. While he's doing that, you need to push the buttons to activate one of the shrink rays. When you get one of them working, you have to charge it up and shoot it at Plankton, but sometimes he can dodge the shots you fire at. <laughs> this fight is a good final battle of Patrick vs. Plankton. However, the reason this battle is only number 10 is because this battle is really easy, so that's why I can't put it any higher. The Spongebob movie game is awesome. Did I ever tell you that? It's probably the most nostalgic Spongebob game I have. I have so many good memories of it, but enough nostalgia. Two bosses from the Spongebob movie game have ended up on here. The first one here is the rematch between you and Dennis. At the beginning of this fight, Dennis emerges from the bigger booth, and Patrick stumbles into the water. This means you have to play as Spongebob in this fight. Dennis's main attack is throwing knives at you, which is weird because why doesn't the Hasselhoff scream in agony? Oh, did I mention that? You're riding on the Hasselhoff this entire fight. It's weird, yet cool at the same time. I have no idea how to finish this sentence. The only way to attack Dennis is with your Spongebob attack. One final thing I have to mention about this boss is the music. It feels like I'm in a Jaws movie while I'm fighting. Just have a listen. What a great rematch to a great Spongebob movie. And here's a great joke to end this segment. I'M BACK! The final CFTKK boss already? Yeah, like I said, these aren't the best bosses in the world. Now, what could the last boss from this awesome game be? How about the first final boss you'll see on this list? It's the Spongebob vs. Patrick vs. Plankton battle. What a mouthful. This fight, which is more of a race, will, will decide who will leave the dream world. You can play as three different characters in this race, and each of them have their own types of game club. This with Spongebob, it's like the previous racing levels where you hit speed boosters to go faster, there's a time limit, and you would need to pass checkpoints to stop the clock. Patrick is flying on a rocket ship, which is pretty cool, by the way. And you need to collect fuel thingies to continue flying. You can actually go different places with Patrick. Plankton is driving a hovercraft, and his course is a lot like Spongebob's and Patrick's. He has to cross checkpoints to stop the clock, and he can go different places. Overall, this fight is a great final boss fight to an awesome underrated game. The only downside to this fight is that it's hard, especially if you're doing it for the first time. Oh well, it's still a good final boss fight. Okay, number 7 is going to raise some controversy, because I am one of the few people who actually like Truth or Square the game. Sure, the levels and music are the ones we've seen and heard in previous installments, but it's definitely not bad. The bosses in this game are just great. The first one on here is the Robot Squidward boss fight. This fight begins with Squidward spitting out robot enemies. This makes me question what else he can spit out. Then he busts out his clarinet and hurls dangerous notes at you. You then have to make your way to a pile of gum, I'm not making that up, so you can launch yourself at his plankton eye. Once you do that, he moves the gum pile to another location and starts attacking you with his tentacles. Repeat this two more times and you win. The robot Squidward boss fight is a great boss fight and it's the first time that you see Squidward as a robot. You know what robot boss the Spongebob series needs? A robot Mr. Krabs.
Battle for Bikini Bottom is by far my favorite SpongeBob game. With its great levels and amazing music, this stands as one of my favorite games of all time. For the only time on here, there will be four bosses from the game on this list. I'm just going to make something clear. The mini bosses in BFBB are just meh. Some of them are stupidly easy, especially the King Jellyfish battle. My favorite mini boss is the Flying Dutchman fight. This fight is simple yet tons of fun. The first thing about this fight that makes it fun is that you're playing the Sandy, which, as I said in top 10 favorite video game animals, is the most fun to play as character. His main attacks are lasers that come out of his eyes and barfing. Hey, that's weird. All you have to do is go around him, lasso his ghost tail thing, and repeat until he drops. The Flying Dutchman fight is really easy yet really fun. I wish I had more to talk about, so here's something fun. Wait, SpongeBob! We're not cavemen! We have technology! It didn't work. Time for the second final boss on here. It's the Chum Bucket Robot. This boss is insane. It starts out with Plankton launching you onto a skyscraper. Oh my back! Sorry, I had to do that. You then have to make your way across the rooftops. Obvious battle for Bikini. Bottom reference aside to get to a pile of gum. Launch yourself at the robot and then you can enter inside him. Inside him you'll find a core generator thingy that you have to destroy to damage him. Repeat this two more times and you win. The John Bucket robot fight is awesome. It's got maybe the coolest design for a boss on here. It looks like a cross between a shark and, well, the John Bucket. Nothing else that can be said right here. Patrick is without a doubt my favorite Spongebob character. He's just so dumb, I love him, and lucky for me, they made a boss out of him. And do I like it? This is a boss's list, what do you think? This fight is awesome. It starts out with Squidward acting like a bozo and running from giant robot Patrick. Hey, I won't blame him. Now you have to unfreeze Squidward by Plankton's breath. If eating ice cream causes him to do that, I don't want to see him when he eats that chili pepper. You have to attack the button on his back, which is just a piece of paper. Did I mention he's lazy? After you hit him three times, he freezes you and now you have to play as Sandy. Thank goodness. This is the best part about this fight because you can fly around and stuff. After that, my least favorite part about this fight happens. You now have to use the bubble bowl to take him down. It's okay, but with all the spinning around, he could end up anywhere. This fight is great. It's got good atmosphere, cool design, and sweet music. The reason it is any any higher is about the last part I talked about. I have no idea how to end this segment, so I'm going to do this. <gasps> Wee! I'm spinning in a chair! Ultimate heck yes. The Buckethead King Neptune fight from the Spongebob movie game is amazing. This fight is hard, yet so much fun. In order to beat King Neptune, you have to turn all the tables towards him, and when he fires his sniper staff, the blast will be knocked back towards him, and then you have to use your sonic wave guitar to do some actual damage. King Neptune's main attacks are shooting stuff at you with his staff thing. One of his attacks is creating a crap load of energy beams that covers the entire floor. I have to create Fuffle's minion on this one. Like holy shit! You think that's enough energy beams? After you hit him twice, something awesome happens. He breaks the floor and Goofy Goober Rock plays in the background. This is the part of the fight that made me think that there's no going back. This is the final showdown and I can do this. The finally, the music. The track that plays in the first half of this fight is incredible. Heck, the track that's playing is my intro theme. Now that makes it great. To finish, the Buckethead King Neptune fight is incredible. The music is great, the difficulty is great, everything about this fight is great. With all the greatness that I'm giving it, you might think it's number one. But no, we got two more entries on here. Now let's see them. Most of the bosses, not counting the mini bosses in Battle for Bikini Bottom, have three phases. The best one I think is number two on this list. It's the Robot Sandy fight. Sure, it may be one of the first bosses in the game, but it's so much fun. In the first phase, you have to bubble bounce the giant robot squirrel by dodging one of its smashes. In the second phase, you play as Patrick, where you have to literally jump on it, causing its head to fall off, and now you gotta carry the head to a broken sign thing and throw it at it, causing the body of the robot squirrel to short circuit. I mean, wow, that's a lot! After that, the excitement goes down a bit. You have to bubble bounce on it, causing its head to fall off, but it'll catch it. 
so I have to bubble bash the weak spot under its head. Kind of lost the excitement there. Oh well, this fight is still awesome. Now how could any boss top this one? Let's find out. Obvious choice for number one. Holy crap, this fight is without a doubt the best Spongebob boss in existence. And how could it be below any number? It's the final battle of one of my favorite games of all time. It starts out with the twist that Plankton made a robot copy of himself and a robot Spongebob. His main attacks are chopping across a circle of platforms, chopping down at a platform, and saying karate, and those words can actually hurt you. Spongebob makes no sense. You have to hit the very obvious weak points with your cruise bubble attack. After that, you think the fight is over, right? Wrong! Instead, SpongeBot grows larger than ever and now you have to jump inside it to destroy the brain. But the robot Plankton is in there to stop you, so you're kind of fighting two people in this fight. And that's why this fight is number one. It's got great music, awesome boss design, and it's just a great conclusion to an amazing game. I'm the Popfish Kid, and my favorite game of all time is Battle for Bikini Bottom. You know what, Robot Boss the...